The following program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters. everybody, CammieBaker.com here, and we are the Happiness Jungle TV show, and we are so excited to have you here with us today. We have a wonderful lady boss, an entrepreneur, a new friend of mine, Cassandra, whom I met out at a networking event recently. She has a very fascinating business, and I'm going to let her take it from here because she wants everyone to know that there is power. There's power in music. Absolutely. Talk to us about that, Miss Cassandra. First of all, thank you so much for having me on the show. I really appreciate it. I'm very happy to be here on the Happiness Jungle, actually right in my hometown where I grew up. <laughs> um, so the company that I run is called Brightset Entertainment, and it is a booking agency for musicians and other performing artists. So what we do is we facilitate the connection between these musicians and performing artists and the venues that hire them to perform. And there is a huge need for that. There's actually a guy that does a show out of this station who's a rap artist. Oh. And he and I were actually talking about how I could help him get more sponsors and things. I'll, I'll put you in contact. So, Great. so when you talk about artists and different people that you book, tell us a little bit about the different uh, types of music. Do you do country, rap, rock, single people, big groups? Like, what's the deal? Basically, yes. <laughs> all of that. Uh, I have worked with all different types of artists. It's actually one of the things that I pride myself on, being able to offer artists that are sometimes difficult to find. Hmm. Um, most recently, actually currently, I am working on bringing in um, Carnatic Indian musicians. Um, now, those musicians are... I mean, the types of instruments that they play, they're just not common. Hmm. Um, I'm actually working with... Like the didgeridoo with... thing? The big... <laughs> is it, is... Yes. Yeah? If I... Don't quote me on this, but if I... I'm correct. It, they're in, the instruments are called the Natawasaram, uh, the Tavil, hmm. and there are some other ones that are a little harder to pronounce. <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm bringing them in for um, an Indian wedding, and the music is just gorgeous. Mm. Um, but they are definitely a, you know, an instrument and an artist that's harder to find, so the groom's mother reached out to me. Interesting. So what got you into this? You, you mentioned to me that you've always been a musician of sorts. To bring us back to Cassandra's early days. Early days. Where, were you born with, with, uh, with music in your soul? Absolutely. Absolutely. So I come from a very musical and very entrepreneurial family. Um, but my mother is an amazing musician, amazing musician. Mm -hmm. um, she's produced a full length album uh, back when I was younger of singer songwriter type songs. Uh, she is a fantastic pianist, beautiful vocalist. My older brother, he is a drummer. My younger brother is a guitar player. My husband is a guitar player. I know he came later, <laughs> but still, musical family. And it's I'm interesting a vocalist as how, well. how it really runs in the family. Mus musicians really do, and, and dancers, and I don't, I don't know what runs in my family. I'm, I'm, I'm the only entrepreneur that I know of, and I, boy, I just jumped right out of the box. But, so what kind of instruments do you play? I dabbled in a couple different instruments when I was younger. I played the flute for a while. In high school, I played the guitar. Um, I play the piano very poorly, <laughs> <laughs> but I can, I can play and read music still. Uh, but my primary instrument is my voice. I am a vocalist. I always have been a vocalist. I always will be a vocalist. I'm going to spare you of asking you to hum a few bars of something. <laughs> I, won't, I won't torture you with that. But do you have any recordings that we might uh, be able to hear that might be on the Internet somewhere? Yes. I am the manager of my own uh, band right now. It's called Cassandra Lee and the Acoustic Project. And you can find us online at Cassandra Lee Band. It's C-A-S-S-A-N-D-R-A. L-E-E-B-A-N-D.com. Uh, we are also on Facebook at facebook.com slash CL and the Acoustic Project. But if you go to our website, it will link you to our Facebook page as well as to some SoundCloud recordings, to some videos, um, even one from last weekend where we played the Arlington Porch Fest. 
So some new stuff up there too. So of course you are your favorite artist to book. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> of course I love booking my own band, of course. Um, however, I think it's really important to spread the opportunity. Mm. Yeah. Of course. I, I remember when I was in real estate, we used to say, uh, you know, if, if you want to get your multifamily building sold, don't give it to somebody who owns multifamily buildings because they're going to be selling their own instead of yours. But in your case, you really want to see your people shine. You want to put them Absolutely. in the spotlight because, hey, that's it's your business and, and your voice may or may not be around forever, but all of your artists will. And you've already put together a really nice portfolio of, of artists. So you're looking more for or at least equally as an amount of uh, venues too yes correct yeah so any venue that is in the habit of booking live music this can be a coffee house it can be a restaurant it can be a bar it can be a public library a farmers market a school a retail store I mean the list is really endless um, anyone who's planning an event such as a anniversary party a backyard barbecue um, people who are planning their wedding Entertainment is a huge part of that, mm. but really, I enjoy so much spreading the joy that that music creates to whoever. You know, when you mentioned weddings, did you know that you can get insurance to insure the wedding so that if it gets rained out or if somebody, God forbid, gives the ring back, <laughs> that you're actually insured and you still get compensated? Yes. Isn't that interesting? You can get insurance for some strange things these days. I'll say. I'll, uh, <laughs> dog bites, septic systems, all kinds of stuff. So, so now you, you could have done this for somebody else and been somebody else's employee, but you decided to do your own business. Talk to me about your entrepreneurialism. Where did that come from? Well, like I said, I do come from a long line of entrepreneurs. I have entrepreneurs on my mother's side. I have entrepreneurs on my father's side. Um, my father himself. Hi, Dad. <laughs> he uh, is a huge entrepreneur and has owned successful businesses and it just kind of runs in my blood. Mm. I always felt a little, I don't know what the right word is, I guess uncomfortable working for someone else. Mm -hmm. I feel that I always produced quality work and I was never reprimanded for my work or my timing or any of that, but I, I never was really truly happy mm -hmm. in you know, being somebody else's employee. Mm -hmm. And I thought for a long time, well, maybe if I change jobs, then I'll be happy in a, maybe a smaller radio station, maybe a bigger radio station, maybe a record label. I've always been in the entertainment industry. And while I loved all the people that I met working in these positions and made some great friends and, and some of them who have left and work in other places, we, we work together um, today as well. But I just, I just needed to, to branch out on my own. I just There's something about us entrepreneurs that are maverick, rebel, wanting to forge our own path and do our own thing. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, that is certainly the case. And what you just mentioned, I've mentioned this on the show before, uh, you worked in the industry, you worked for other people and really understood how the whole industry works and then created your own thing. Correct. I know for myself, I've done that uh, in the bar industry. I was a waitress and a bartender and a shot girl and all that stuff mm -hmm. and, and then I own my own bar. Wow. And in real estate, I worked for a real estate agent and put together his listing packets and worked in the office for a year and a half, but then I became my own agent. So other people basically trained me to be the competition, if you will, and a lot of entrepreneurs tend to do that. They'll work for someone else in the same industry, learn what they like, what they don't like, and put together their own thing. So what are, the th some, what are a couple of the things that you learned from other people not to do? <laughs> not to do, let's see. I would definitely say that I am very good about getting back to people in a timely manner. Mm -hmm. One of the things that can make working for someone else or working for yourself a lot harder is when you're, whether you work for yourself or someone else, you're still relying upon other people, mm -hmm. period. There's I nobody know. in the world that has a job where they're just relying upon themselves as far as I know. Yeah. There's always someone else, some outside factor that you're working with. So I would say definitely you want to be as timely as possible with your responses. You want to be as professional as possible with the way that you interact with your potential clients, with your artists, with your current clients, and really anyone that you come in contact with, whether it's just a networking event or, or anything else. Professionalism and business etiquette are sorely missing 
<laughs> You're sorely missing in this world. It's amazing. We go out networking. We, we get an, take an hour to get there. We're an hour at the event, an hour to get home. Go, come home with all these business cards and nobody ever calls anybody. <laughs> but that's not the case with us because I reached out to you and you reached back out. And here we are having a nice chat. Just goes to show networking works it when does. you work it. It does. Networking has been one of the most successful ways of gathering clients for my business. And before I started my own business, I had no idea about this world of networking that truly exists. It, and it's a huge, huge thing. It's, mm. you know, there are so many different kinds of networking groups and different types of networking events. And, and uh, I just dove right into it. Yeah. <laughs> it's fun. It fascinates me when I meet people that have never, I'll meet somebody at an event that will, this is my very first one, your very first time at this group? No, my very first time out networking, like, how does that even happen? But I guess people <laughs> have to start somewhere. I've been to thousands mm. and thousands of networking events, so it just blows my mind. But it is, it's a whole, there's a whole underworld of everything, including music. Like, there's a whole underworld of that. So your there tagline is. is, discover the power of music? Of live music. Of live music. Yeah. What do you think is the power of live music? Oh my goodness, that, that's a loaded question. So music is powerful in so many different ways. So many different ways. Music can turn your mood around. Mm -hmm. Music can, I mean, music can medically heal you. Mm -hmm. There are people out there called music therapists. Um, I know quite a few of them. Some of my artists I'm, uh, on my roster are actually music therapists as well. And there is just so much joy to be spread through music. There is just so much uh, just passion and, and power of connection that it brings, not only for the people who are performing the music, because I can tell you as a musician, you form very close bonds with the people that you play music with, for sure. My band members, past and present, are my family members. 100% they were at my wedding. You know, we have dinner together every Sunday night. Mm -hmm. Shout out to my keyboard player, Catherine, for cooking us dinner every single Sunday night at <laughs> rehearsal. <laughs> but for the people who are watching as well, I mean, if you think about it, um, venues like restaurants and bars, coffee houses, they use the power of live music, not only to attract customers, which helps with the, their livelihood, their income and, and their entrepreneurial running of their business, but I mean, there's just the ways that it brings power and connection to people are just, it, they're just endless. It does, and there's, there's so many researches also done about how different music can help you learn quicker, like Baroque music. Right. I remember when I was learning scripts many years ago in sales, we had um, uh, someone who taught us about listening to the script with Baroque music in the background, and just I would listen to it overnight when I was sleeping. It was really low in the background with, the, uh, you know, the whole Beethoven thing going on or something right. with the script, and I... It really works. There's studies about how um, kids in uh, Russia, that when they use the Baroque music, they learn so much faster. So it just, and then you hear a song and it brings you back to 10 years ago and automatically you know the words. You're like, I haven't heard this song in 10 years and I'm <laughs> singing along with it. It shows you, it shows you the power that music just has on your mind mentally. Yeah. Just to be able to remember the lyrics and, and it's, it's another language and it's another form of expression. Everybody has an outlet, I believe. Some people like to exercise and that's their outlet. Some people cry and that's their outlet. That's how they get their, you know, expression. That's how they express. Um, others play music and I have always found that form of expression to be so interesting and so valuable. Mm. And to have been able to make a business right around what your passion is. As they say, when you do what you love, you never work a day in your life. That's so true. Yeah. So what are some books, some mentors you've had? What are some things from an entrepreneurial perspective that you think have really helped you to, to stay the course? Because being an entrepreneur is not easy. Now, mm -hmm. now, I would say being an employee and having to live somebody <laughs> else's dream is definitely not easy. Yes. However, being an entrepreneur, there are a lot of times in our run-of-the-mill day that we could say, wow, this is too hard, I want to quit. What are the things that inspire you to keep you on track? Oh, there's, there are a couple great ones that come to mind. Um, being an entrepreneur, let me say, has been the biggest roller coaster ride mm -hmm. of my existence. And I'm not sure, I know I'm, I'm still young, but I'm not sure there's going to be anything else that's going to be as much of a roller coaster ride as being an entrepreneur. It's something that nobody can really prepare themselves for. Mm -hmm. um, 
so there are definitely places that I look for support. Um, that I would recommend any entrepreneur look for support uh, because it's so important to have a network of people who are supporting you and who are pushing you to continue Amen. Uh, and so that you don't break under the pressure of, of you know, working for yourself. Uh, so some of these places, I will say um, I have been involved with insight seminars for a long time. Uh, they are, it's a, it's a, you know, organization that runs seminars, their personal, um, development, personal growth and development seminars, and they have really helped to push me outside of my comfort zone, hmm. and that was almost the beginning. Uh, you know, I had little thoughts back then, you know, what if, what if I marry the man of my dreams, which I did? What if I start a business, which I did? You know, and this, 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 this fear of people basically has, um, were, were my, my start of support. Um, my family has been really supportive, and I would be completely remiss if I did not mention Entrepreneurship for All, uh, better known as E for All, uh, Liana Cushi and Joey Bond. They are the, um, they head up the Lowell Lawrence um, kind of location of E for All. E for All is, is in a lot of different locations, but E for All is a nonprofit organization that supports entrepreneurs that are either about to launch their business, have a business idea, or have launched their business and need to grow. Mm. And they support, there's, ugh, there's no other support in the world like E for All. I love doing this show and being a public figure and networking and meeting so many people and, and having the ability to create conversation because you just shared with me two resources I haven't heard of. And I've been hardcore networking and business building for 15 years. I was, I was an entrepreneur when I was eight years old selling gum to other kids for a profit. <laughs> so when I tell people I've got 40 plus years of entrepreneurial uh, background, I really do. Um, and then you hear about something new like that. So I'd love for you to share a, a link with me uh, in, a, in an email or something of, sure. those, of those groups because I always love to check them out. So when you, I mean, you sound really passionate about that second group that you mentioned. What are some things that, that like, are, are, are there certain mentors or certain things that, that you've heard from them that have just really stuck with you? So they run a bunch of different events. The first event that I ever went to, uh, eFrol all event, was an event about women in entrepreneurship. And it was a panel of women speaking about their experiences. And when I got there, I noticed that the people who were attending this event were such a big group of um, entrepreneurs who, who really like to stay connected. Everyone kept saying to me, I'm an Accelerator alumni. Are you an Accelerator alumni? And I was like, what? A what? <laughs> I had no idea what this was. Uh, but then I ended up meeting Joey, who again is, is one of the ones that, that heads up uh, the Lowell Lawrence locations. And, and he told me that the Accelerator is a course. It's a 12-week intensive course for entrepreneurs about it's a business course. It's essentially like getting your master's degree in 12 weeks. It's crazy intensive. Hmm. And they teach you about customer segmentation and value propositioning and, and everything that goes with building and launching a successful business. Um, there are 15 spots in that program and they run it every uh, summer and winter, I believe it is. So they're running one now, mm -hmm. which I was so fortunate enough to be able to get involved in. I think there were something like 70 applicants and they doodled it down to 25 and they had these intense interviews with wow. you know, eight people sitting around a table grilling you about your business and, and how far along are you and what do you do and how do you plan to keep this going and are you gonna hire employees and what, what are you gonna pay them and how are you gonna work? And I was just, I just nailed it. <laughs> I'm not even gonna lie. Like, <laughs> I could see that nailed, you would. Nailed it, nailed it, nailed it, every question. and. I left there feeling so confident, and, and uh, they, again, doodled it down to 15 spots, and um, I just started the program a couple of weeks ago. I love that. I love hearing that they are actually pre-qualifying and qualifying some more who's going to be in the program, because most places, you know, if you pay your fee, they'll take anybody and everybody, and the problem for those of us who are serious, you end up getting in this group of people who aren't really serious and aren't really leveling you up, but it sounds like when you get involved in that group, you're... you're uh, you're in it to win it. Yeah, there's some very uh, intense vetting that goes on, and it's very easy to tell because when I am in class and I look around, all of those other entrepreneurs who are already starting to become family to me, um, they're all so talented, and their business, their businesses, whether they've started or it's just an idea, um, they're all such great and unique 
ideas and they're all such talented wonderful people and I'm just completely blessed to be a part of you for all and it's so nice to know that you're doing that sort of thing because your clients can know that you are always learning That's you're right. always growing I say all the time the more I know the more I know I don't know and the more I know I need to know <laughs> And the more clients that I have, and the more people I work with, the more I want to go learn because I want to bring it back. And I, the, more I, the more clients I have, the more I learn from them. That's and right. it's just this whole swapping and swirling of energy. And I can see that sitting in a group of people like that will help to keep you on track because we've been talking about you know, what inspires you and what keeps you on track. You mentioned that your family's been very supportive. A lot of us don't have supportive families out there that are going to help us. There are a lot of people are, you know, oh, that doesn't work, or you need to just get a job, or when are you going to stop living that dream, mm. that type of thing. So it's awesome that your family has supported you and you found. So how did you find these other groups? Because our people that are watching, we want them to know, look, there's a group for you. There's all kinds of groups out there that can support and inspire you. If the people you're hanging out with are saying to you, oh, you know, you just need to get a job, or that's, anybody is not lifting you up and supporting you and praising you, you need to really evaluate what is that person doing in your life. Mm -hmm. And, and it, that is such an important point that you bring up, Cammie, because I learned this a long time ago. I learned it in a pretty negative way, mm -hmm. that you will become like the people you surround yourself with. Mm -hmm. If there's one thing that you take away from this show today, I would say to, to the viewers to, to really, really let that sink in. Uh, and I was talking with, uh, I had class last night and I was talking with one of my fellow um, classmates about that as we were leaving. Um, there, there are a couple people in my life that I did need to let go, people who I thought were really close friends that would be there for the rest of my life, uh, but they were going down paths that weren't, they weren't the paths that I wanted to go down. And I knew I had to let them go so I could build myself up. Mm -hmm. So that's basically where I started to find all of these different types of um, you know, organizations and these communities that just lift each other up. Uh, because I, I learned that very young. I think I was probably, I don't know if I was even 20 yet, when I started saying, I have to let these people go, even though I love them. I can love them from afar. and. Unfortunately, you know, some of those people are still going down the paths that they started going down, and I'm, um, I'm sorry for them, and I love them, but I'm just glad that I'm not with them. Well, Dr. Wayne Dwyer says, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Mm -hmm. And so when you decided, you know what, I think I need to find other people to hang out with, when you change the way you looked at things, the things you looked at change. So now all of a sudden you're finding whether you're Googling or whether you're at a networking event, somebody says, hey, have you heard of this group? You know, isn't it interesting when sometimes you'll hear something and you'll hear the same name of a group, two or th like the ones that you just mentioned, I'll probably hear them again mm -hmm. and the next week and I've never heard them in 50, 50 years. I just turned 50 on Saturday. What? 50 years I've never heard of those <laughs> groups. But then I'll hear about them a couple of times and be like, oh, I really need to, need to delve into that because it is, it is so important. I call it changing your playgrounds and your playmates. Mm -hmm. You know, who are you playing with? What yeah. is that? Because every time I get interviewed, people will say, well, what is that one little thing that you'll want to leave our listeners, or our viewers, or our readers with? I always say change your playgrounds and playmates because it's free. And even though it may not be easy in the beginning, it is, it is, it is so necessary. You know, who is, who, what is the input that you're getting? Look at the resource of where you're getting that input. And is, right. do they have what you want? It, do they have the checkbook you have? Do they have the lifestyle you have? Do they have the family and the friends? Do they carry themselves the way that you want? Because if they don't, why are you taking advice from them? Right. And are they as supportive as you are? Because there's, there's something about being su supportive to others that are looking for support that brings support to you, in a sense. Mm -hmm. um, and when you, you know, run your own business, the more support that you can get, the better. So. Absolutely. And the more you help other people get what they want, the more you can get what you want. So in the last couple of minutes of the show, let's talk about why you want to help these artists to be seen and be heard and be in these venues and be able to share their music and the power of music. What is it that speaks to your heart about that? Well, I have seen a little bit of a decline in live music recently, and it's it's painful for me to see that because music is my outlet and music is what speaks to me and what opens my heart and what I love. And 
uh, I, I'm sure that there's always going to be a radio station that you can flip on. There's always going to be a concert. Maybe your favorite artist is going to come to town um, twice a year, you know, and you can go and you can purchase tickets and you can go see them in concert. But there's something really special and really valuable about live and local music that just cannot be lost. It's something that is so valuable to our communities and it shapes who we are. Um, and and if, it's, if it's being lessened in any way, I feel that it's my responsibility to save it. There's so many artists that are so talented. All of my artists are so talented. Mm. They're so talented. And you know, being in the music industry is so difficult, especially as an artist to be seen and heard. So anything that I can do to help these talented artists get out there and spread their music and you know, in doing so, they will be spreading joy and, and bringing the community together and facilitating love and happiness. There's nothing, there's nothing like that. There's nothing better than that. So if I can help with that, you know, and as, a, as an artist myself, a musician and a business owner, I really do feel like I bring something different to the table um, because I can really help facilitate that, um, you know, there's almost like a gap. I bridge the gap between, you know, the, commun the communication between the venue and the artist and, and I really can understand what the artist needs and wants and what the venue needs and wants and, and just bringing that together. If I can do that, why would I not? Preach it, girl. I love that you get so excited about that. You. And you're right. You know, there's, there is a whole movement of people that are wanting to keep live music, live entertainment, like plays alive. I've worked with a group that has a little black box theater, and they're so passionate about keeping live theater alive. And even my 19-year-old, I'll take her to a play, uh, especially a musical, and it's amazing to me. My 19-year-old just... You know, she's just on fire about being in a live environment. So thank you for helping us to keep, uh, you know, this, this wonderful entertainment. You know, way back many, many years ago, we'd sit around a fire pit and we'd all have our yep. musical instruments and we'd tell stories and it was a live interaction. And as human right. beings, we are just animals. Yeah. Who, who need that social interaction. And so, we're missing it now because of the cell phones and the screens all day. Well, thanks to people like you, we're not missing it nearly as much as we were. So, Cassandra, thank you so much for being on the show with us. We're going to wrap it up. CammyBaker.com here. I'm the queen of the happiness jungle today with my co-queen, Cassandra. And we want you to know that if you are a musician and you want to be seen and be heard, you want to contact this wonderful woman. And if you have a venue and you're wanting to bring the power of live music to your people... Here's yeah. your connection. Here's your connection. Yep. So go out and make it a happy day for you. It is a jungle out there, but we can keep it happy. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. The preceding program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters.